Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for this talk tonight. On behalf of Kuwait Foundation for the Advancement of Sciences, it gives me a great pleasure to welcome you all to this KFAS webinar. Our goal is to transform Kuwait into a knowledge-based economy, and we strive to achieve this through the promotion of science, technology, um, innovation, and research. In this regard, KFAS, through its capacity building program, strives to equip local scientists with the skills necessary to write, manage, and execute a successful high-quality research proposal and projects. Tonight, we have arranged to have a special guest joining us to share his insights and expertise. Professor Ali Boumjdad is a professor of chemistry at the Kuwait University. He will be presenting tonight's talk on how to make a successful research proposal. At the end of this uh, webinar, we will have 10 minutes for A's and Q's if you shall have any questions. In addition, at the end of this session, uh, you will find a feedback that we wish that you would fill uh, in order to hear from you uh, your opinion regarding this webinar. I will now like to uh, welcome Professor Ali and would like to leave the floor for him to start his presentation. Professor Ali, the mic is yours. Uh, I would like just to start the presentation. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm so glad actually to have this uh, opportunity. Thank you to KFAS. Uh, this is not my presentation. Yeah, this is the one. Uh, I'm going to talk with you for around 40 minutes to 40 minutes about how to make a successful research proposal. I hope my sound is uh, clear. My sound is fine. Okay. I will start with just giving you some definitions, actually, because uh, any researcher should, uh, should know these kind of uh, uh, names. You know, in any proposal, you have investigators and you have researchers. Uh, the investigator is actually the one responsible for the project. The researchers are actually, uh, they are working on the, on the project. So the first four actually here are the investigators. The PI, the principal investigator, is the person responsible for the project. He should be having the highest responsibility actually. Uh, usually he's a faculty at university or senior researcher at research institute. Sometimes this investigator need a co-investigator with him to help him if he, for example, he have too many tasks or, for example, he have some tasks that he's not aware of or he don't have, uh, I mean, knowledge about it, he can assign a co-investigator, one or two, depend on the project. The co-investigator can be internal, external, or non-residential. The co-investigator should also have a PhD degree. And if, for example, he don't but he need a contributor to work on a special task or special uh, skills. If I have a three-year project and in the second year I want to work for two months on certain experiment that I'm not familiar with. Here actually you should uh, select a contributor because this is not an investigator, this is a contributor only for certain part of the project. Consultant actually is uh, someone will work on um, someone you invited as an as expert to supervise the project to give you uh, to give you the opinion actually about the progress of the prog uh, of the project whether you are uh, working uh, uh, fine or there is some obstacles or problems the consultant usually paid money while the contributor the investigator and principal investigator he don't get money from the project the consultant sometimes he get money that's why he might not need to put his name on the publication if he was just uh, giving you a consultation. The researcher is the, actually the real man who is going to work on the lab or on the, on the computer. Um, of course, you have to know that there is uh, uh, several types of researchers, someone with the PhD or master degree or bachelor degree or even less than bachelor degree. So it depends on your uh, requirement. You should select. If, if he need a 
PhD, they will give him different salary, of course, according to Kuwait University. And uh, if he have a master, he will get less salary. And he, if he get a PhD, uh, a BSc, the salary will be less. Um, it is very good always to get a postgraduate on the project. This will be like a cabinet. And I think the reviewers will deliver such kind of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, participant so if you have a master degree or phd degree student this will be always good undergraduate also sometimes they work on the last year on uh, of their study on a small project you can also give them a very small task to to be finished within one or two months or three months at the max okay uh, now let me go to uh, talk about how to select uh, the research topic this is very important from the beginning how to select a research topic you need to select a novel topic that you like so it has to be novel, it has to be uh, not just new, but important. This is the meaning of no novelty, uh, new and important. But also you should like it, otherwise you will not be able to work on, on it. Uh, research is very difficult actually to do if you don't like. So you have to like the topic and you find yourself on doing this, uh, this kind of research. And it has to be new and important. Uh, of course, the topic that you select should be reflected in your CV. So, for example, don't select a topic far away from your field of experience. Uh, the reviewer will not uh, accept that, and the funding institute will not accept it, actually. So you have to select a topic related to your field. Let's say you are a junior researcher and you still don't have publication. In this way, you can have a co-investigator to help you, actually, with a good CV, or you can perform a preliminary work that are related to the topic of the project, and you can show the reviewer that you are familiar with the project um, by showing them some preliminary work. Or you can start with a small project. So with a small project, it's okay if your CV is not uh, very uh, solid. But for large project, either you have a good CV or co-investigator to help you, or uh, preliminary work that show that you can do the work. Uh, I already mentioned it should be new, but not trivial. The meaning of new and not trivial is actually not novel work. So I'll, I'll give you just a quick example to differentiate between a new and uh, trivial uh, idea. If you have, uh, this is from my field of experience, core shell particles, uh, actually, uh, this is some work I do actually from time to time. If you publish a work on a core shell particles, you have metal oxide in the core and covered by a shell of the another metal oxide. And now you want to apply for a new idea. It is a mistake actually to say that I want to reverse the order. I want to put the shell and the core and the core and the shell. This will be a non. Uh, this will be a trivial actually idea because you didn't do anything else. You are just doing trying try try and error. You are trying something and you, you don't know, you don't have strong basis to support your case. So this is a big mistake, don't do it when you submit a project. Um, what do you need to do before starting writing the proposal? First, you should ask yourself, do you have the time? Are you free or you are busy? If you are busy, I will say don't apply for a project because you need, you have a commitment actually, if the proposal was accepted, you need to, um, have a commitment. The second point is read the literature. You need to read the literature because actually to write the proposal you should be familiar with the literature related to the topic that you select. This is important. The third uh, point is very important. Read the funding agency regulation and criteria, evaluation criteria. This is a very important topic because when you write the proposal, you should keep in your mind the evaluation criteria for each institute. I'm giving you some uh, two examples because I'm familiar with KU and KFOS. Um, this is an example of the criteria belong to KU project. They will they will ask the reviewer actually to give ten marks. Uh, I mean to evaluate the originality out of ten marks evaluate the presentation of your proposal, background where you write actually about the project, the idea project and the literature and the gap in the literature. The methodology is very important where you explain your experimental part, how, how you are going to achieve the goals. 
The budget is also very important, 20 marks. Productivity, are you expecting to have presentations in a conference or journals? 10 marks. The time plan is very important because you have to organize yourself to finish all the tasks of the project. So you have to put a time plan. I'll give you an example later on. Research, you have to show that your research will have impact. For example, you are going to train a student. This is an impact. Or you are going to establish a new software. This is an uh, impact. And also research, research importance, if it's going to help some solving some problem internationally or locally related to Kuwait problems. This is uh, according to KU. KFAS have slightly different factor to or criteria, but almost the same, maybe different terminology. Originality also there. And the scientific merit, actually, KFAS combine the background evaluation, the objectives, and also the methodology. That's why it, it has 40%, about 40%. Uh, the path of success is very important. So KFAS will ask the reviewer, for example, do you think this project will have, I mean, uh, will succeed? For example, the, the researcher can succeed in doing the, uh, this project. So the reviewer will check your CV, because he can tell from your CV whether you have the experience or not. He will check your goals, whether you are estimating, I mean, you are uh, suggesting good amount of uh, goals or you are over exaggerate. For example, you have the capabilities. You, did you select the right team? Because it's a big mistake to select the wrong teams. If your co investigator is not familiar at all, that means the path of success of this project is blocked, actually. Expected output of the, pro uh, of the project, um, publications or conference participation or patent. Significance to Kuwait and KFAS mission, this is 10 marks. This is actually very also important. You have to read what topic KFAS or KU or KISAR are interested in and select, select among these topics in order to have the chance, better chance for acceptance of the project. Okay, you need to look, locate the available resources and collaborators. After you did all the three steps I mentioned, you need to locate the available resources at your lab, at your college, and also at your university. And if you have some resources not available at your university, you need to locate it outside your, your university, like another local national university. Of course, sometimes you have to pay money for that. You have to consider it in the budget. The collabor collaborators, you need to get in touch with the collaborators, the investigator, contributor, consultant. Talk to them whether they are available, do they like the idea? Do they have the experience or not? OK, uh, the last point here, you need to perform preliminary work at your facilities if possible. This is very good because you are going to show the reviewer that you are able to do the experiment in your lab. If you can do that, this will be excellent. OK, what about the component of, the, of any typical proposal? Of course, any proposal will have a title and abstract. I will tell you later on what you should write in a title and what should write, you should write in an abstract. Uh, you need the background about the project, overall uh, summary of the project and the literature uh, survey, what has been done before and what is the gap in the literature. The goals, you need the goals, uh, the objectives, very important. The importance of this um, Proposal, you need a section to tell the importance of your proposal, and then you talk to the experimental part, which is the methodology. If you have preliminary result, you should mention it. There is something important, I will mention it here. It's called plan uh, B. Plan B means if you have obstacles during your, uh, the progress of your project, you need to find a way to maneuver or to work around this problem. You also need to have task schedule and assign the responsibility for each uh, investigators. You need to mention the project manpower. You need to talk about the budget. And the budget, you have to focus on the cost of the manpower, the operating expenses, which is the consumables usually, and the capital expenditure, which is actually the equipment. And don't buy equipment or ask for buying equipment if you already have it in your department or in your college or in your institute.
try to approach the people responsible for the equipment and use it. Productivity and capacity building is also very important. You need to write about it. So these kind of things should be in your mind, beside the criteria that I mentioned before, when you write a proposal. This is just a quick example from Kuwait University and from KFAS. This is from Kuwait University, if you see the mouse. You need to mention the manpower, the missions, if you are going to go for a conference or you want to invite a visiting expert, the equipment if you need to order equipment, and the running cost, which is actually the, mainly the consumables. This is actually for a one-year project. You can see only there is information on the first year. But even if it is for two years or three years, you shouldn't actually assign equipment for the second and third year because uh, ordering equipment will take time. And that's why you have to order it, actually. You have to put it in the first year budget, not in the second or the third year. In Kuwait University, they block for you, actually, the second year and third year. You have to put it in the second year. The same apply for, for KFAS form. This is, for example, the salary of a PhD holder, according to Kuwait rule. This is the salary of a master uh, holder, uh, holder, and this is uh, the salary of a BSc holder, uh, research manpower. Of course, you can have it as temporary or, uh, I mean, permanent. This is the consumables here and here, expenditure. Uh, this is an example of the task, typical, I would say, typical example of tasks. Now, you, for Kuwait University proposal, you fill it online, actually, on the website your task here and then you have to assign a time for it for example here literature review and ordering the equipment in the first three months synthesis or preparing the material i have here and then a gap and then majority year or six months of the second year investigation of the heavy metals uptake i would say characterization the major part of the project so second year and third year Assessment, re recyclability, for example, uh, uh, scaling up, modeling, this will be starting on the third year. So I told you you might need a contributor. Let's assume the experimental part here, you are not familiar with it, and you need a contributor to work from in the second year, from uh, month seven to month uh, one and the third year. This is where you assign a contributor to do this experiment, and then he leave. If you have a publication, that involve the result from here, you have to put his name, of course. Uh, this is an example of the commitment. As a BI, you should have the highest commitment usually, 12 hours, for example, per week. Uh, they will ask you how many other uh, projects you have. If you don't have projects, I mean, other than the one you are applying for, you put zero here. And they will ask you, what is your teaching load? As a faculty, you have a teaching load, so you have to mention it. Look to the co-investigator one, six hours, because you already have another project, and you have commitment toward another project for six hours, and you have teaching for six hours. It's a big mistake to assign yourself uh, a time that you cannot afford. The reviewer is clever, actually, and he will catch it. If you mention, for example, here 36 nobody can afford 36 hours per week if you have a teaching and have another uh, commitment. Okay, plan B, what I mean by plan B? Uh, let's assume you have a four stage proposal, start with collecting plant and then extract the material from the plant and then characterize this material and then apply it for certain application. This plant only grow at certain season, for example. If you, if for example, something goes in this season, for example, there was no rain, you will, not, you will not get the plant. That means you cannot go, you cannot extract the material. So the first step is very important. If you don't get the plant, you cannot start the material. That means you cannot go for step three and step four. You need a plan B. This is how it looks like a plan B. You can say, okay, I'll start with this plant to extract the material. If, I, if something goes wrong, I have another replacement for another plant. If something goes wrong, I will buy it from a dealer, for example. And now I go to the extraction, I'm sure the extraction will work. I go for the characterization, I'm sure the characterization will work. But for the application, I have doubts. So I have two applications. If this one didn't work, I will go for the alternative. This is the way to do, actually, plan B. Uh, and you have to include it in the pro uh, proposal. 
in KFAS forms contingency plan. Okay, now how to select the contributor on what basis? You can select the contributor based on the idea of the project. If you are a chemist, for example, and you have a project that involves a little bit of biology or some biology application, that means you need a multidisciplinary, actually someone away from your field, from the biology department, to be as a co-investigator or contributor. Uh, sometimes you need someone very close to your field, but slightly different. I will give you an example. This is called actually interdisciplinary. If you are working an experiment, uh, let's say physical uh, experiment, but you need a theoretician, also with physical background. So this will be another collaborator, but with theoretical background. This is how to select actually the contributor. Of course, you have to justify it very, very well in the proposal. You have to tell this contributor have the capability that I don't have, and this is the CV. You can see how is good, uh, how he is good in uh, what he's doing, for example. And of course, you have to uh, check the. Uh, you have to assign the role of each partner very clear. So you have to tell this role will be the responsibility of this contributor, and this role will be the uh, responsibility of the other contributor. Okay, I'll stop here for a while just to ask you uh, quick questions. And then the, I want you to vote actually on this poll. Uh, just give me a minute. Okay, you can see now there is a, a question saying new research idea means novel research idea. Okay, now 70% vote, actually. Okay, I think this is fair enough. Let me just explain. There is some 60% saying it's false, 40%, around 40% saying this, it is true. Actually, new research idea is not necessarily novel idea. There is another element in novel novelty beside the new uh, idea. The element is actually, I called it, to make it simple, important. So you can have a new idea, but not important. This is not novel. You, have, you should have uh, a new and important idea. And the reviewer are actually very clever on these things. They will catch it immediately. They will say, this is new, but it's not interesting, it's not important, it's not novel. And they will not give you a good mark in the novelty or originality. Okay, let's continue uh, the talk. Um, I want to talk in this slide about how to make sure your proposal is clear and effective. So now you, you reach to the point of writing, actually, and I will tell you some uh, advices and some of the mistakes that I did also in my career to learn from it. You always have to think like a reviewer and ask yourself, why this project worth funding? This is actually a very important point. Uh, think like a reviewer. How to think like a reviewer? Keep your, uh, the criteria in front of you. Originality, methodology, novelty, right team, uh, manpower, the budget. And then ask yourself, if the reviewer see what I wrote, for example, did I convince him that my team is selected, in a, in a, I mean, very carefully? The co-investigator is very important in the project. Uh, did I assign a good budget or I overestimate the budget, for example, or underestimate the budget? So you keep the criteria in front of you, write uh, the proposal and think like a reviewer. Of course, keep in your mind, the reviewer is not, maybe not familiar with the specific task of the project, but he is expert in the field. So he might not be, aware of the material that you are going to extract from the plant, but he, he is familiar in the plant research, so he know about the plant research. 
So you have to make it, you have to make your writing very clear. Okay, the second point, you always ask yourself, what are you after? Why you are after this and how to achieve it? Um, to answer what you are after, actually, that means you have to talk about the goals, the objectives of the project. This is what you are after, the gap in the literature. This is what you are after, to fill a gap in the literature. Is my voice uh, okay now? There was some problem. Okay, sorry for that. Let me just uh, start again explaining this uh, slide. Uh, sorry for that, I don't know what happened. In this slide, I'm going to talk about how to make sure your proposal is clear. Let me just go back. How to make this uh, the proposal very clear. You need to think like a reviewer and ask yourself why this project worth funding. So keep the criteria in front of you and ask yourself, if, uh, for example, if I write, uh, if, uh, for example, do you think the reviewer will be convinced by what you wrote already about the team, justification of having a investigator or contributor? Do you think the reviewer will be convinced or not? Did you select the correct budget or not? Is your methodology clear or not? So you have to ask yourself uh, these questions and keeping in mind the reviewer is going to write to read it. The reviewer is actually expert in the field, but maybe he's not familiar with the specific task you are working with. Like, for example, if you want to do to extract certain uh, material from plant, maybe the reviewer is not familiar with the extraction that you are going to do, but he's familiar with the plant research. So we have to make the proposal sim uh, simple and easy for him to understand. The second point, you have to ask yourself before writing or during writing, what you are after, why you are after in this. Uh, you have to mention the goals very clear and talk about the gap and the literature very clear. Uh, why you are after that? you have to mention the importance of your research or proposed research. The important is here. And then you have to mention how to achieve it. Here, actually, you talk about the experimental and methodology. 
this is very important. Now, the third point you should keep in mind, um, the title should be specific, but not very long, not too long. I'll give you two examples. This is a very short uh, title and not specific, actually. Very short and not specific. You're just saying new material. What type of material you are looking after? For water purification. Purification from what? This is bad example of a title. This is a better example of a title. I'm going to use iron oxide nanoparticles. So this is the material for removal of heavy metals from polluted water. Short, around 10 words. I will say maximum 15 words in the, in the title. Don't write more than 15 uh, words in the title. But also, should be, should be very specific toward the topic of your proposal. The last thing in this slide I want to mention, the abstract should be minimum text. Don't write two page abstract, just one page is enough. And this uh, one page, you should talk about the motivation of your research, the sample, for example, you are uh, going to study or prepare the technique that you are going to use and the expected finding uh, based on your hypothesis, for example. This is how to write an abstract. Okay, make your proposal simple, well written, well edited, very well revised. I will talk about, uh, I mean by well edited, don't uh, have too many grammatical or spelling mistakes because this will give bad impression to the reviewers. They will say if this uh, author of the proposal is not able to write a good proposal, he will not be able to publish, for example, good in a good journal, for example. So make sure you don't have spelling mistakes or grammatical mistakes. Very well, very well revised. I mean here, you revise it by yourself, by, you, by your colleagues, and also ask someone abroad from the field, I mean away from the field, ask him to read it for you. Because they're usually the people who are close to the field will overlook uh, some of the mistakes or some of the difficulties because they are understand uh, the system or the experiment. But if you ask someone, if you are a biologist, ask someone from the physicist, for example, physicist or uh, from chemistry department, away from your field, he will tell you, I don't understand this paragraph. That means you should make it simpler. Use, you can use figure and diagrams in a proposal and tables. I'll give you an example. Not necessarily, but it will be useful to use it. You know that a picture worth sometimes a thousand words. Uh, you can always use clear heading, subheading, and short sections. So, uh, for example, if you have long methodology, in my field, usually we prepare material and then we characterize it and then we test it for certain application. I will divide the methodology. I don't keep it like three pages or four pages as one, one section. I will start with heading, for example, uh, methodology, and then subheading, preparation or synthesis, and then another subheading, characterization. And then another subheading, for example, surface characterization and bulk characterization. To make it short, sections is better to, under, to be understood by the reviewer. Research plan uh, should be, uh, just one more. Should describe how the goal will be met. So if you, uh, for example, proposing to achieve five goals, in the methodology, you have to mention where you are going to achieve goal number one. For example, let's say goal number one is in the synthesis. You have to mention it. This is actually achieving, by finishing this uh, synthesis, I will be achieving goal number one. By finishing this characterization, I will be achieving goal number two. By finishing the applications, tests, I will be finishing goal number three and four. So you have to connect between the goals and the methodology. The visibility is very important. You have to make sure your uh, report is, or the proposal is very visible. Of course, by using the correct CV, and you have to show a preliminary result because the reviewer will be asked, do you think this, this work is visible or not? He will base his conclusion uh, based on the team that you select, the budget you are assigned, uh, your CV, and the preliminary results. So you have to write special CV actually for proposal. Don't include too many talk about teaching and about uh, committees. And the research, they focus on the publications and 
conference presentations and workshops. So we have to focus on the research in our CV. Uh, the sec uh, next point is actually you have to mention clearly your work. So don't only focus on the advantages. Also mention a little bit or talk a little bit about the limitation of example. I I know that it's but because I am applying for two year project, I will not have time, so I, there is time limitation. I will only select three out of four variables, for example. This will be good actually to mention. That this will give the feeling to the reviewer you are familiar, the project is under your control. You know what you should do, and you don't overestimate your capabilities. Okay, tasks should be split clearly between the investigators. This is also very important. You have six tasks. Three of them, for example, will be under your supervision as a PI. One will be for assigned for one contributor, for example. Two will be assigned for the co-investigator. This is very, very important to assign the task for each investigator. These are examples of diagrams and figures I use in some of my research proposal. You can see in one diagram, you are summarizing the whole methodology, actually. I'm summarizing, summarizing the whole methodology in this diagram because this is synthesis here, this is characterization, this is another characterization, and this is application, actually. So summarizing is good. This is also another typical example. Of course, you have to select figure related to your field. Usually, the best place to put your figures or to use figures in the preliminary work. If you have preliminary work, of course, you have to use figures to show the result. But don't use too many figures. Two will be enough, or one table, for example. What are the This is very important. Common mistakes, usually, in proposal, uh, you, if you are proposing research, uh, the proposed research is not novel. This is a killer, actually, from the beginning. If you select trivial uh, idea, it will be rejected from the beginning. The money, I mean, the funding agency will, don't, I mean, don't want to fund a project which is very trivial, not very important. It's uh, something, I mean, not useful. Methodology is very important. I have four examples. Some of these actually I did in my career. I make some mistakes also. So I'll give you some examples of my mistakes happened in the methodology. You are talking about using too many facilities, for example, in the proposal. You said, I'm going to use this, 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 this. But you don't mention it is, if this facility available in your institute or not. I did this once, and I regret it until now. I don't know how I did it, but I, uh, I did it. So this is a big mistake. You have to mention you have it. I have this, and this is free of charge, for example, available in the general facility at Kuwait University, for example. Um, you are assuming 10 measurement is statistically, statistically OK, without mentioning or supporting such assumption. This is assumption. Usually, statistical sample need more than 10. How you can uh, say it's 10 is uh, OK, you have to uh, explain it, actually. Don't tell the reviewer, trust me, I'm good at my work, for example. You have to mention why you think 10 samples is good uh, for statistics. You will use very old, for example, manual method for measuring, while automated method is available for you or available um, in another university. You have to mention why you are using or why you select manual method while you have automated method. For example, you can say this is accurate, more convenient. I use it in my preliminary work and I get very good result, as good as the automated, for example. You want to use very a very expensive material for large scale application. I did this mistake once. I want to convince the reviewer that I'm going to apply my research into large scale application. But my material is very expensive, so it is not visible, actually. You have to have cheap material in order to go for large-scale application. So this is some example of the mistakes and the methodology. OK, research team not qualified. This is another common mistake. You select the wrong uh, contributor. You want to give him a favor, for example. 
sometimes it happened this is an academia very big mistake you select the wrong team you select the wrong for example you need a biologist and you select a physicist very big mistake uh, the reviewer you remember that there is three reviewer if one miss one point the second one will catch it okay goals cannot be achieved i mean by this two things actually the goal cannot be achieved because it's very difficult you don't have the facility or cannot be achieved because you are assigning too many goals within short times for example so there is limitation in the time so you have to be careful you can achieve the goals during the times assigned and also you have the capability to do it you have the facility to do to achieve such goals another common mistake is actually the proposed work cannot be completed within the time frame you have very extensive methodology too many variables too many uh, chemical going to be used you have too many applications you want to test your material for cancer treatment or uh, let's say photocatalyst to, to, for pollution for you are proposing things that need 10 years in a three-year proposal this is very bad and you might get rejected almost i mean for sure you'll get rejected so don't promise um, goals that you cannot achieve okay there is few more mistakes i will mention it the required funding is too high or too small if you ask for too high uh, fund you might get rejected by the panel or the funding institute even if the reviewer give you good evaluation because you know you shouldn't treat the funding institute as a shopping list you know you want to buy everything you need in your lab even if it is not related to your project if you estimate uh, underestimate your project for example you underestimate the budget the reviewer will catch this and he will say i don't think this project will be uh, the goals will be achieved with the uh, with this very small limited budget if you have a reason for for example all the facilities are free of charge for you and it's available uh, you are going to work yourself because you have a sabbatical for example you have to justify it you have to say i'm using small budget because i'm going to to work on my uh, proposal for example not a researcher so i don't have to pay salary for the research for example no plan b some of the some type of project need a plan b if you don't mention it this will you will, you will get low mark in this part you are not aware of the risk and ethical aspect you are you want to treat cancer uh, you want to take some human samples but you don't mention anything about the ethical aspect of this actually how you are going to get the samples from which hospital do you have the permission or you, are, you want to work with toxic material toxic uh, metals for example and you don't mention whether your lab is dealing with such material or not um, the rule of each member of the team is not clear this is also a mistake you have to assign the rule for each member of the material very clearly don't say i need two contributor and you don't differentiate between what the responsibility for the first contributor and what the responsibility for the second contributor for example uh, references is outdated this is very common actually if you use very old references all the references in the 70s or 80s while there is good publication that published last year in 2019 or 2020 you always have to update your references in the back in the background of the proposal before you submit the proposal okay background is very general insufficient or inappropriate don't write very very general background uh, i will give you example in my field if i am i want to work with uh, for example iron oxide nanoparticles for environmental application i don't need to write a big paragraph or long paragraph about nanotechnology the reviewer is not interested in this you have to focus you go directly to the nanoparticles the topic you, are, you want to work on the literature what's been done before and what is the missing gaps or the problems I and mean, still not solved and you'll say i want to solve this kind of problem because it's very important to Kuwait, for example don't make it very general 
Okay, the last point here is missing the right partners. I did this mistake before. I said in my project in the last year, I want to deal or um, I want to cooperate with industry and try my product in certain industry. But I didn't mention what industry it is. Uh, I didn't get in touch with them. I don't have permission with them. So the reviewer told me, you, are, you don't have the right partner. You should already, already obtain the letter from them saying that they are available and they are willing to work with you in order to accept the proposal. Okay, second, very quick actually. I hope you can answer it, this one. Underestimated budget will give you a higher chance for accepting your proposal. Okay, we'll receive uh, around 110 answers. The majority say it is false, which is true actually. This is false. If you have uh, a good reviewer, they will tell actually this is bad uh, example. You are estimating very limited budget, but you are promising uh, too many goals. You will say, I will doubt the researcher will be able to achieve this goal with this budget. Okay, I have two more slides and then we'll open the floor for questions. If the grant was approved, you need to make sure you fulfill what you promise. So don't overload yourself with uh, responsibilities. Don't uh, take too many teaching courses. Um, don't, for example, uh, participate in too many committees because this is a real responsibility. You have commitment toward this project and you have to write every year a, uh, a report you have to achieve what you promised uh, to do so don't overload yourself if you can afford not to take a summer course for example as a faculty and work uh, focus on the research this will be good if you can afford to take a sabbatical this will be another things to do actually to achieve your goals if your project was rejected or major revision is uh, required I will say, don't be upset. Your proposal was rejected based on uh, expert in the field, reviewer expert in the field, and usually there are three. So it's not one or two. There, there is three reviewers saying there is a problem. Maybe sometimes one of them or two of them. But don't be upset. Uh, take it, uh, I mean, with good intention. Uh, you have to keep also in mind the funding agency assign limited budget every year for projects. So if you have, if they have, for example, 20 good projects, but they have budget for 15, let's say, proposal, they will select the best 15 out of the 20. Maybe you will be from the 15 or you'll be from the rejected five. This is also understandable, actually, for me. Uh, take the rejection as opportunity. So improve your skills, improve your writing, Check what is the reviewer comment and try to uh, modify your proposal for the next round and you can apply again with the better proposal. The last thing I would like to say here, take the responsibility of your failure and don't uh, blame the others. This is not a good thing actually. If you have major problems, you select the wrong teams or you underestimate your budget or you don't try to put methodology or you select the wrong topic actually, not uh, new, already done before. You have to take the responsibility of your mistake. Okay, I'll stop here and I will leave uh, the floor for questions and answer. Okay, um, I will select some of the questions. When you talk about the benefit or importance of the project, you write in bullet point. 
format or narrative paragraph. Yeah, in my opinion, the objective should be in bullet point, but don't uh, narrative uh, paragraph. This is the way I use to do all the projects I have seen. They are following this. One time I reviewed actually a proposal from Gulf uh, University, and they wrote the objective as a paragraph. I didn't like it actually. I asked them to write it as point because these are the goals. These are the objective. It has to be very specific. Uh, specific. Okay. Does KFS also fund uh, for publishing the work? This is, I mean, I will leave the answer for KFS, but from my experience and the proposal there is uh, and the funding and the budget, they will ask you, do you, want, do you need publication fees? If you need publication fees, uh, does the researcher first author, uh, oh, sorry, the question just moved on. I have several questions. What size budget project would be for a new researcher? Okay, if the new researcher at Kuwait University, they give him some, they give him something called uh, a small project, uh, but with I think limited uh, four uh, four thousand KD. So you can you can go for this four thousand KD at the beginning, and then there is another category with ten thousand KD. Uh, the ten thousand KD will be evaluated by external reviewer, while the four thousand KD can be evaluated by external and by internal. Okay, I was, uh, I should, uh, okay, how much are consultant paid? Uh, yes, uh, the consultant actually for Kuwait University, even if you get the budget from KFAS, the Kuwait University rule will, uh, will be applied on the budget. So Kuwait University accept to pay the consultant, I think, around 500 KD per week, with maximum, I think, of 1,000 KD. So you can invite them for two weeks to come as expert to evaluate your work and they'll give them maximum of 1,000 KD plus, of course, the uh, travel, I mean, expenses and the accommodation. How to manage the experimental part of the project in terms of time management? Meaning how I would estimate each uh, test uh, experiment will take. Okay, this actually come by experience. Uh, if you know, for example, you are going to need, for example, your sample preparation need to be left in, let's say, chamber for a week. So you give it two or three weeks because you might be able to repeat the experiment. Sometimes the experiment need only, uh, some experiment need three months, for example. You need to wait. If you give medicine, for example, to a mouse and you want to know the effect after three months or after one year. So you have to estimate, uh, give one year. So it depends on the, in your field and your experience and always ask colleagues, if you are not familiar, ask colleagues who did similar research, they will advise you on this uh, aspect. Noha, what is the difference between publishing between research paper and project? Uh, publishing between research paper and project. I'm working with research, but I am still studying, and my doctor asked me to work on a project. Uh, working on a project is not a publication. Working on a project is a research. Uh, in order to publish it, you either go for a journal, peer-reviewed journal, or a conference. So this is the way to publish your work. Okay. Uh, finish. How can the research field be reflected in my CV? How can the research uh, field be reflected in my CV if, if it is my first attempt? Yeah, this is, I mentioned it already. In this case, because you have a problem, uh, your, your CV is still short, you are a junior researcher, apply for a small project or find a supervisor to be as a PI and you as a co-I or do some preliminary work to tell the institute that you are capable of doing work and or you already did some experiment and you get good result, for example. So this is the way to do it. Can you have the co-PI from, uh, from other countries? Yes, Kuwait and KFAS both accept to have the co-PI from other country, 
providing that you can justify it. If you have similar uh, expertise in your university or in another institute at Kuwait, for example, you shouldn't select someone from abroad. But if you are working in the topic, uh, you only, I mean, the only expert you can find is someone from abroad, they will accept that and they call it non-residential co-PI or co-investigator. Okay. What if I apply a grant? It uh, takes a lot of time to review. Does that mean the proposal is bad or there is something uh, better that needs to be done to accelerate the time of uh, uh, critical response? Usually, review, the reviewing process takes at least, usually from my experience, six months if you are applying for a big project, large project. If you are applying for a small project, you might uh, get the answer within two to three months or one month if it is a very small project. So you should expect that. Usually, if you want to work next year, you should apply from this year. It will take you up to almost one year from the applying to the start of the project. So it's not your mistake. This is the way actually uh, reviewing projects is, is done worldwide. Does the researcher, first author, have to hold a PhD to do the research uh, or to gain funding? For Kuwait University, they don't accept a PI, principal investigator, unless he have a, unless he is a fac faculty, actually, a staff member. Even if you have a PhD, but you are not faculty, they don't accept to give you the role of PI, but they give, you can be assigned, if you have a PhD, the role of co-investigator. Uh, if you are, if you don't have PhD, maybe you can assign it as, um, I will say, contributor. This is possible, or you can be a student, for example, doing your master or PhD in the project. You need, uh, I mean, skills to do research, and if you don't have PhD, usually you don't have the skills to do a proposal research. Of course, there is exceptions. I'm not saying everyone don't have the experience. Manpower training in which part of the proposal? Um, you should, when you hire a manpower, you, sh you should select someone already trained. Okay, uh, so you can advertise, for example, for a researcher. You can say, I want a researcher experience with this kind of facilities or this kind of preparation, and you will receive application and you select it out of them to save time because you don't want to want to waste time on training. But you can train student, master and PhD student on the, on the project. This is where you train people, master, PhD student or undergraduate. But the researcher should be already familiar. Even if he's not 100%, you can train him. Uh, but you, at least you should have some knowledge about the project and the field of the project. Okay. Are we supposed to include literature review related work in the background or it's too early for this stage of in uh, the background? This is the first, the first things that the reviewer will look after. You have to say what has been done on the topic you are selecting and what is the missing point because there is no topic, nothing has been done. If you want to work with cancer treatment, there is thousands of research done related to cancer treatment. But there is a gap you want to fill. You can say, for example, I am going to extract the material for cancer treatment from local uh, Kuwait, Kuwaiti land, for example. Or I, I will prepare it slightly with different method, for example. And you have to justify it. This is important. And I want to enhance, for example, the capability of the solar cells. So you have to justify your uh, selection. As a faculty of KU, should I apply through KU research sector or directly through KFAS? Yes, this is very important questions. You have to apply through KU. All the KU rules will be applied on you, uh, especially especially those related to the budget. So KU is saying if you have if your researcher have a PhD, the, uh, the his salary will be 700 KD. This is a must. You have to include it in the budget. You have to calculate your budget according to this uh, rule. Also, for example, KU say, said, 
for example, let me just remember both. Uh, let's say, uh, okay, you say you can only hire one researcher. You have to stick with this one. You cannot take uh, two, two researchers. Even if the fund coming from KFOS, they will not accept. Uh, okay, you say if you want to go for a conference to European country, they will pay you 1,750. So this is the budget. Even the KFOS is the one going to pay for you. The budget you should assign for a conference in Europe, 1,750. In the United States, 2,500, for example. In the Gulf, GCC, 750, as, as far as I remember, or 1,000. So you have to follow the Kuwaiti rule. That's why you need to, write, to read very carefully the, the regulations. Do KFOS, okay, you use the blend, uh, blending and their grant reviewer process. Um, you mean to get the fund from to an institute? I think KFAS uh, accepted that. I'm not sure about Kuwait. I never came across this. But KFAS will ask you maybe in the proposal, do you have a fund for the project or not? Um, uh, in KU, I'm not sure about that. All my research with KU was uh, just one funding body from KU. So sorry, I cannot give you final answer. I think we covered all, let me see if there is any new questions. Yeah, we covered all the questions. Thank you very much for attending the seminar or the webinar. I hope it is useful and uh, I will leave the floor for KFAS to close the session. Thank you so much, uh, Professor uh, Ali, for this presentation. And I would like to thank everyone who joined us tonight. I would like to ask you, please, to fill in a feedback form at the end of this uh, session uh, so we can hear from you your feedback. Thank you very much, and have a good night.